Hi, Nathan Cole here, and we're talking metronome today, our favorite musical and mechanical device. Maybe not favorite, but after this video it will be. First things first, you're going to see a link in the description that will take you to my website where you can download a worksheet that goes along with this video. It's, uh, it helps you keep track of the rules, the guidelines we're going to set out here. It's printable, you can put it right on your stand. And as a bonus, it includes another metronome practice technique called Parallel Tracks. So if you don't have that yet, hit pause, go download it, come right back here. I would call the metronome both overrated and underrated, if that's possible. Um, the metronome is overrated when we expect it to, to just fix our playing, you know, to solve every technical problem we could have but it's underrated if we just dismiss it and if we fail to realize the metronome's flexibility and great power when paired with a creative mind. And that's what we're gonna work on today. After all, the metronome is really only a tool. It's like a tape measure to a carpenter, right? Tape measure can't build a house. Carpenter has to do that. Um, tape measure doesn't make things straight or even. Carpenter has to do that. But the tape measure reveals information that the carpenter might not know, right? And that's what we want our metronome to do for us. We're actually going to have to take it one step further because while a carpenter would never just build a house all by feel, all by instinct, we're eventually going to have to play our music without the metronome, relying only on our internal pulse. So we want to use the metronome to train and develop that. So. My five rules of the metronome, it's an article I wrote several years ago. It's been up on my site for a while, but it's high time for a video treatment. So let me uh, lay them out. If you follow them, you're going to see faster results and waste a lot less time. And I hope you're going to have more fun with your metronome practice. Is that possible to have fun and play musically with the metronome? I certainly think so. Um, so here are the rules. Number one. Play with the metronome as though you're playing with another human being. Number two, before you turn the metronome on, decide when you're going to turn it off. Number three, work it up with the metronome only as a last resort. Number four, favor big beats in your metronome practice. And number five, favor the off beats. And let's uh, go over each of these in detail. So one is the most important because that sets up all the rest. You're going to play with the metronome as though it's another human being or several. Chamber music, like a chamber group. You know, if you were playing this uh, from the Bach double, this uh, solo... If you're playing that with other humans, and you started rushing, right? It would take all of two seconds for someone to shout out, hey, you know, you're rushing there. What would not happen is that the group would keep just playing half a second apart. But how often have you heard, or perhaps done yourself, I know I have, that exact situation with the metronome? If I set it to 100, for example, and by the way, I'm using a metronome app. This is tonal energy, but uh, any any app will do as long as you have fine control over the tempo. Um, got my metronome at 100. So here's me. I'm going to be kind of rushing and always correcting myself. I always got, I always got back with it. What's the harm? Metronome kept me back, right? I'm kind of like that dog you're walking on the leash that is always pulling ahead. You know, yeah, the dog never gets away, but uh, would you call that dog well behaved? I certainly wouldn't, and uh, my dog is in that phase right now. Um, so you've got to learn to relax into the pulse of the metronome and play with it again as if it's another human being not against it. What might that sound like? Let's see if I can pull it off. Right. Now, 
jazz and some other non-classical folks will often refer to that as playing in the pocket, right? When you're right with the metronome such that the click actually disappears. Okay, so when you're relaxed and shaping your line truly with the metronome, you almost shouldn't hear that click when it coincides with a note. You want to play in the pocket, play as though you're making music. Simple as that. So rule two, before you turn the metronome on, decide when you're going to turn it off. Have a plan, right? And that really follows naturally from rule one. Because the worst thing you can do with the metronome is just to switch it on and leave it on. <laughs> Can't tell you how many practice rooms I've stood outside or passed by where I hear that metronome on and I realize if I'm next door, I realize 10 minutes have gone by, that click is still going. And uh, for too many players, when the metronome is switched on, the brain is just switched off. And that's the worst way to use your practice time, right? So have a plan, have a reason for clicking it on. Maybe you want to check the opening tempo of something. Um, let me set it to 120, and I'm going to play the beginning of Bach C major sonata, uh, the, the last movement. Um, so, okay, I want to check my opening tempo, check the stability. It's a perfectly good reason to put the metronome on, so I just turned it off. Um, my plan is to check it for the first four bars to see if I can get off the ground in a stable way and stay there for, for a few bars. Let me do that. Give myself a cue. To... Okay, and let's say I want to do that three times, okay? And now the second time this happens. Let me show you again. So, maybe I'm exaggerating to make a point. I've been guilty of that. So what happened? I was lagging in that third beat, right? So I've turned the metronome off. I, I've identified that I got behind in that third beat because my second bar wasn't with the click. I've turned it off so I can really listen and focus on my playing. I want to figure out why that's happening. Okay, so... Something about those notes is slow. Why is that? Ah, well, it's certainly easier a little bit higher in the bow, so maybe I just got stuck in the wrong part of the bow. Yeah, let me try it working myself up a little higher. Uh, that's certainly a lot easier. I bet that's going to be more with the metronome. Yeah, and I think that was I think that was the reason. <laughs> Doesn't solve one other problem, which is that whistling E string in the beginning, right? That's a separate video, um, not made yet. Um, so what did I do? I solved a problem without the metronome's help. And in fact, if I had just doggedly kept the metronome on, I might not have found that solution. So I identified some information, solved problem, came back to test again, problem solved. Maybe later in the movement, there's some tricky transition that I wanna do a, a spot check. There's no need to play through the entire thing with the metronome to get to that spot, keep the click going the whole time. If you're really dying to know how steady you are, you, you want to play a whole thing metronomically, it, you're better off recording yourself playing through the thing without the metronome and then turning the metronome on for playback or using that tap feature, right? Sometimes I'll do that. I'll record myself, then I'll tap along with certain places to see, you know, am I trending up? Am I trending down? So uh, usually, however, your own ear can tell you that when you're not playing at the same time. But yeah, if you really want to check, you're better off recording playing back with the metronome instead. Let's you evaluate after the fact. Um, so the recap for rule two, always have a plan when you're going to turn it off. All right. Number three, you're going to work it up. I put that in air quotes. Work it up only as a last resort. 
you know, I can't decide what's the most common uh, terrible metronome practice technique. Is it um, turning on a metronome to force yourself to practice slowly, uh, to hold yourself back? Um, that's just a bad idea for so many reasons. Or is it using the metronome to work a passage up click by click? You know, that means you practice it first at 60 and then you put it up 64, then 68. Can I do it? Um, it's like that, that uh, cringe inducing scene from the, the movie, The Red Violin, where that poor kid has to, you know, get it faster and faster and faster. Now, notice I don't say never work it up with the metronome, um, but only do that if all else fails, okay? Because, you know, hey, so sometimes your bathroom tile just has to sparkle and nothing else will do other than going square by square, uh, but it takes a long time. Now, uh, there are only so many hours in the day. I'm as willing as anyone to put in that hard work if that's what's gonna get me there. But actually there's a more important reason not to work in that fashion. Let me put it to you this way. Have you ever tried walking fast? I mean, really fast. Have you ever seen that Olympic uh, power walking sport? That's the one where they have, you know, umpires or referees standing by to make sure everybody always has at least one foot on the ground. You're not allowed to have both feet off at the same time. Um, and those folks can go the pros, you know, they can go really fast. Um, but if you've tried it, you'll know that it's extremely tiring. It's really hard to do, really tiring. And you know what's just as fast as that is a slow jog. Much easier, more natural. And yet, so many players use the metronome to trap themselves in that walk. So let me uh, set it now to 80. Oh, that's 79. Good. Now I'm going to play um, Kreutzer's Etude number 8. And that's going to be my eighth note, okay? This is going to be slow practice, right? So right with the click. Okay, I'm going to spare you the rest. Now what's wrong with that? That was, I mean, I think that was in tune. Good, good sound. Maybe it was even a straight bow. All, all good things, right? What's wrong with that? Nothing if I only ever need to play it slowly and without any kind of shape or musical feeling, right? But if the point of my slow practice is to eventually get it fast and fluid, then I'm failing, okay? Because if I just do this faster and faster, I'm going to demo some working up here. I'll do the fast version. Here's 88. Okay, good. Let's put it up. Here's 100. Okay, good. Let's do the 116. Okay, I haven't hit my limit yet. It's getting faster and faster. Here's 130. Okay, now it's starting to get kind of hard. 144. And now I'm, I'm working, okay? It's feeling faster and faster. Eventually, I'm gonna hit a speed limit with this. Um, the, just this walking is gonna be so tiring that I can't push myself any further. I can feel my muscles working even. So what should I have done instead? What's the option? Well, I should have figured out how to transform the walk into a slow jog, and then of course into a run, eventually. What does that mean violinistically? And this could be the subject of many other videos, but things like letting fingers drop, fall onto the string in position rather than placing them, because in the slow practice I was really... Right? Just placing every finger, kind of hard. Instead, I could be using minimum finger pressure. I made a video on MVP about that. Could be working fingers in groups, right? Dropping or lifting multiple fingers to clear the way for the next pattern. Like that four and three together. The two and one together. Uh, moving fingers over to the new string early, even in slow practice, right? Right? 
right? Moving the bow to the new string in advance. Okay, even shaping, there's an idea. <laughs> so all things that I can and should do without the metronome. Once I've done all of that, and I have a, a credible row, Metronome's not gonna help me with that shift. Once I've done all that, then I'll see where I am and if I truly need the metronome. Because once I've got that, what if I just do that faster? Nice. And I'll bet that my speed limit with the jog and the run, it's gonna be a lot higher than it was with the fast walk, okay? So, then if I need the metronome's help, I'll take it. Bottom line, figure out what's holding you back first before you just start pushing yourself with the metronome. All right, let's have even more fun. Rule four, favor the big beats. Nothing too complicated here, it just means to set the metronome for a longer time span, right? instead of the quarter note, the half note, or the whole note, something like that. Um, in solo repertoire, it often makes more sense to set to those bigger units of time. Let's take the Mendelssohn Concerto third movement, right? Um, if I wanted to play with the metronome, does it make more sense to set it to 172? Let's keep cranking this baby up. It was at 144 last. That's a nice brisk tempo. <laughs> uh, one seventy-two or half that, which is eighty-six. If I've done my math correctly, It's much more satisfying the second way. <laughs> Off, click. Um, much more satisfying this way. I don't have to stop there, right? I could have it again, right? That's 43. Well, if the metronome is willing. That's why I love these apps. You know, the old, the old style metronomes that I grew up with. Uh, you couldn't set it to 43. Ooh, all right. Am I going to be able to pull this off? <laughs> All right. Now that's more of a challenge, isn't it? That's going to test my internal pulse more deeply. But I should still be able to play in the pocket, right? That means to make the click disappear if I have a note that coincides with the click. Um, if I can't do that, if that's not happening, which is likely, the more you spread these clicks out, if I can't do that, then I need to figure out what's happening. Where am I rushing? Where am I dragging? And why? And that also gives me more freedom, right, for passages where I might want some rubato. Um, let's take this spot a little bit later in the movement uh, where the accompaniment drops out with the... Right? Now, I definitely want my main beats to be predictable for the orchestra. I'm going to put it back up to 86 rather than 43. And you know, so I want those to, uh, to match up orchestra or piano. But if I play everything exactly evenly, Okay, but here's another possibility. Let's see if this works. <laughs> it's a little bit of an extreme version. Actually, I'm feeling that 86 is a little slow for what I want to do here. Here's 92. 
Maybe I've maybe I've jumped it up to 92 at this point in the movement. Again. There's a teeny bit of point making, but let's say that I wanted to do that. What was I doing? I was kind of taking a little time up top, right? To give that sense of freedom, the sense of play. At least I'd love to be able to, to try that, to have the control to do that with accompaniment. Um, you know, remember that the Italian word rubato, you know, is defined as to rob or, or to steal. So um, if you do that, you've got to do the, the Robin Hood, right? You've got to steal from the scales on the way down to give to the top notes. Um, but for those pieces that really need a strict pulse, like um, the Barber Concerto, the, the third movement, right? The famous... The... Yikes! Um, again, metronome's not going to make that in tune. Um, you know, I wouldn't be putting it on the big beats for purposes of rubato, because this material doesn't really tolerate that. This is just a... Um, but setting to the big beats can help me detect some trends. I'm going to put it to 96. Um, all right. It's a little quicker, isn't it? <laughs> no, I actually think it's the same. Time is funny thing, isn't it? Um, all right, so that is already going to be better than just clicking every three notes, right? I could have made it. But if I do 48 instead, that's going to help me determine what am I doing kind of in the longer term. No? I want to try to make that click disappear. I was a little bit early to that last click. Tells me I'm pushing a little bit. All right. And this also tells me that 48 is probably a little bit too fast for me at this precise moment. So were I alone, I would feel free to turn off the metronome and do some self-service here. But for the purposes of the evenness, um, this gave me some, some valuable information for the beginning that I was pushing it, which my left hand apparently was not ready to do. So then, when I play it with accompaniment, the whole thing is going to seem easier, right? My internal pulse will really have been built up as long as that accompaniment can keep up. And I've heard stories about some Barber Concerto recording sessions with the metronome involved. <laughs> um, rule five. And this is my favorite, favorite one. Favor the offbeats. And we're going to expand the definition of offbeats even. Um, I've saved this one to last because it's the, the wackiest, wackiest metronome rule. Um, but if you're bold, this can really save your hide when it comes to audition preparation. Because um, remember, in orchestra auditions, you have to demonstrate perfect rhythm while at the same time making it so musical that everyone forgets you had perfect rhythm, right? You don't want people to notice <laughs> your rhythm. You just want them to enjoy your presentation. Um, so our technique from rule four about the big beats won't get us there on its own. Uh, if you take the scherzo from Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night's Dream, this is the... I could set my metronome to 80, which is a, that's a good, reasonable performance tempo for this. And I could make sure that all the beats lined up, right? Now, again, there's that exaggeration. What was I doing? compressing all those 16th notes. So the big beats, 
mostly lined up. I think I caught at least one that didn't. Um, but that's not going to match up with the accompaniment in the orchestral context, is it, right? It's often constant eighth notes. And uh, the committee <laughs> certainly isn't going to be fooled by that. It's got to be even within the big beats, too. So that means I've got to click on every eighth, right? I've got to set it to 240. Let's crank it up there again. I love these apps. They can go so fast. All right. So I got to do this, right? Nah. Because <laughs> look what that did. Oh, immediately I started playing. Which is not at all the character of the music. So what choice do I have, though? What if I play with the metronome back at 80, but play so that the click happens on the second eighth of the bar rather than the downbeat? Okay, I'm going to do it first, and then I'll explain how to start it afterward. So the click is going to be on the second eighth of every bar. Etc. Now, if I can keep that going accurately, I can be sure that the middle of the bar is placed correctly. What about placing the click on the third eighth of the bar? Let's see. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I need the music to do it past the syncopations. All right, I kept it going for a few bars. And if I can do that, then I know the end of the bar is going to be placed correctly as well. Um, now, how do you get these started? If I want the click to appear on the second part of the beat, second part of the bar, excuse me, what I'm really saying is that I want it one eighth after the downbeat, right? Therefore, I have to enter on the downbeat one eighth before the click. Does that make sense? I want the click one eighth after the downbeat. Therefore, the downbeat has to be one eighth before the click. So I'm going to come in one eighth before the click. Okay. If I want the click on the third eighth, that means I want the click one eighth before the downbeat. Therefore, I need to play the downbeat one eighth after the click. All right. And as I said, I often need to use the music when I'm practicing this way just to keep track of where I am. Now, when I play it without the metronome, I can really feel all the parts of the bar and maintain the character. Works wonders for places like to keep myself from. Let's try it with another candidate, the Schumann Scherzo, okay? This is the second movement of his second symphony, and uh, that, of course... Now, once again, the accompaniment is sometimes long notes, sometimes quarter notes, sometimes eighth notes. So So there's no room for rubato, especially in an audition. You've just got to display that really tight rhythm. So the standard technique, of course, would be to set to 136. That's my favorite sort of go-to tempo for this. Um, and just play with the metronome, right? Okay, nothing wrong with that. But not always the best way to preserve the character. And what happens when I have to play without the metronome? Anything could happen, right? So what if I want the click on the off beats? In other words, the middle of the beat, the third sixteenth of each beat. This example is a little trickier, isn't it? Because it starts on a, some pickup notes. The first sixteenth is a rest. <laughs> so if I want the click on the third sixteenth of each beat, that means I want it to happen on the very second note that I play. I don't play the first sixteenth, I play the second. 
So I want it on the second note that I play, therefore I'm going to enter one note before the click. Okay, let me slow it down for a moment just to be sure. I'm going to put this to 100 instead. And uh, I'm going to enter one note before the click. Okay, sounds good. Back to, well, whether it does or not, we're going back to 136. I'm going to enter one note before the click. So not only does this let me know that I'm even, but it gives the whole thing just a bouncier feeling. I, everything about it feels easier once I can get into that groove. Now I've done this before, so if this doesn't work right off the bat for you, it's worth a little, worth a little putting in the time to see if you can get it to work. I'm not stuck to these, you know, big beats like before. Um, it's easier to make the long line. I hope you'll find the same thing. Could we get even crazier? What about the second sixteenth of each beat? And since that's the, the note that I play, that just means I'm going to be entering with the click. I'm going to put it back to 100 again um, to check this out. Entering with the click, right? Okay. Sometimes to get going with this, I might actually want to put an accent on those second sixteenths of each beat just to match up with the click temporarily. I got off, didn't I? I got it down to the off beat. As I said, sometimes it's helpful to use the music for this. I should have stopped with, with one attempt, shouldn't I? Um, how about the fourth sixteenth? Now I'm nervous if this is going to work. Um, this is the craziest one of all because I'd need to enter halfway between two clicks, right? Ding, 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 ding. that actually worked. Um, like I say, feel free to slow it down. That's what I would do if I were alone. And I'd probably mark in my music little accents um, to remind myself which notes needed to match up with the click. Um, and take your time with this. This is all in the spirit of pulling apart your sense of pulse to strengthen it for the long run. And um, these unusual accents, by the way, they were a real staple of Ivan Galamian's teaching. Um, they can help develop really amazing bow control. I, my opinion, he may have overused that technique a little bit, but um, I know he's not here to defend himself. But <laughs> if he overdid it a little, um, many players underdo it or never <laughs> try these exotic accent placements and to their detriment uh, because you can gain so much bow control from that. So. Recap the five rules. One, play with the metronome as though it's another human being. Two, have a plan before you turn it on, plan where you're going to turn it off. Three, favor the big beats. Four, favor the off beats. I got the order wrong. <laughs> Number three was actually work it up with the metronome as a last resort. Four, favor the big beats. Five, the wacky one, favor the offbeats. And as a reminder, if you still don't have my worksheet that goes along with this, you'll see that link in the description. Go download it right now because you'll also uh, get a handy reference guide to another metronome practice technique, Parallel Tracks. That's actually another YouTube video, which you could watch right now. But download that sheet, print it out, you can keep it on the stand next to you for reference. And uh, let me know in the comments below. If you try these out, when you try them out, how they worked out for you, which were more successful than others, all right? And in the meantime, happy practicing.